Hello, and welcome back to Idea Sex, where we take an analytical lens to mysticism and spirituality. My name is Kiara, the Mad Witch, and today I am so very excited to be continuing down our little rabbit hole of psychic research. And if you're new here, if you're new to this field, I should say, welcome. Most people don't know this field exists. Most people don't know that there is a vast body of scientific literature, research, and evidence for the existence of psychic phenomena. Uh, in fact, some of these classes of experiments have reached a level of statistical significance um, that is more statistically significant than the effects of FDA-approved pharmaceuticals. Earth is weird. If you are a skeptic, you may want to start with that video there. It is more of an overview, but if you are uh, awake if your third eye is open, if you know the drill, then today we're gonna to be talking about Pat Price, the psychic police commissioner uh, who worked with Russell Targ throughout his um, journey at Stanford Research Institute, CIA, Project Stargate, all that jazz. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's take a look at what this Merlin class magician managed to do. We rise up from the dust and clean my throat. We have talked quite a bit about the work that Russell Targ did at the Stanford Research Institute, SRI, which was the facility that contracted with the CIA in order to do Project Stargate. And Project Stargate was a $20 million, 20-year program uh, that was investigating the use of psychic abilities for military applications. In other words, how can we use these um, abilities, should they exist, these potentially divine abilities, um, to spy on people and kill them. Good job, government. <laughs> great, great use of these things. Another one. I look forward to your downfall. Another one. So Targster and Hal Putoff had been working with Ingo Swan for some time on Project Scanate. And Project Scanate is uh, really where a lot of this research got started. And what it was is Project um, Scanning by Coordinates. That's what Scanate stands for. And they would give Ingo Swan, who was a legendary psychic, uh, they would give him coordinates to anywhere in the world, just somewhere on the globe that Ingo would have no way of knowing. And Ingo would use a form of clairvoyance called remote viewing to sort of project you could say his consciousness there and observe what was happening um, on in in that area. And he did it so successfully that it did catch the attention of the CIA. Uh, he did everything from predict the rings around Jupiter before scientists knew there were rings around Jupiter. He performed reconnaissance on secret Soviet bases um, and he predicted a future but failed Chinese ab atomic bomb, atomic bomb. Test. Um, so yes, the CIA became very interested in him and they actually caught the attention of someone else and that someone was Pat Price. Pat Price called them up at SRI one day and was like, I've been following your work for some time. And they had no idea, no idea how he knew anything about their work. To this day, they still don't know how Pat Price knew what they were working on. Um, but he is psychic, apparently. So he told to them that he had been using the same uh, modality, what do you want to call it, the same way of um, uh, in order to catch criminals as a police commissioner. Like, I'm a psychic police commissioner. That's what they hire me to do. And one day, Russell Targ got to see Pat Price in action. On February 4th, 1974. <laughs> On February 4th, 1974, a high-profile kidnapping took place. A group of uh, domestic terrorists captured a woman named Patricia Hurst. She was a newspaper heiress. And um, the Berkeley Police Department calls the people at SRI, and they're like, can you help us find this person? Because word had gotten out a little bit about what it was that was taking place at SRI. And so Hal, Russell, and um, Pat jump in the car, they drive to the Berkeley Police Department, and Pat is shown this huge book of mugshots, hundreds of photos, and he starts to pan through them, and he stops on a page, points to a mugshot, and says, that's the ringleader, and he was able to identify and name the kidnapper. A detective then asks him, which way did they go? And Pat points north, and he says... I see a white station wagon near a restaurant. It's across the highway from two large white gas storage tanks near an overpass. One of the detectives said, I know where that is. It's on the way to Vallejo, where I live. 
The detectives then dispatched a police cruiser, and within 10 minutes it radioed back that they had found the kidnapped car 15 miles north of us. The car still had cartridges rolling around on the floor, the same caliber of shells we saw earlier in the day on the bedroom floor of Hearst's Berkeley apartment, so there was no doubt they had found the right car. The experience in the police station where Price identified the kidnapper and then located the kidnapped car right in front of me is one of the strongest reasons that I believe in ESP. How could I not? Of course, that part wasn't really reported on because the FBA, the FBA, <laughs> they're all criminals. No, God, please, no. Of course, that part wasn't really reported on because the FBI, um, the sheriff's office and the police department all wanted credit for um, sole credit for finding the heiress, but they did find her and Pat uh, went on, continued to do amazing research at the Stanford Research Institute. Pat Price and Ingo Swan working together. Oh, it is like chocolate and peanut butter. It just goes so well together. It's so decadent. It's so good. But before the CIA got really ramped up with the Stanford Research Institute, they wanted what they called a demonstration of ability. And so these were trials, essentially, um, right? They were like, they're looking at the, the people at SRI and they're like, okay, so you claim to be psychic. Let's, let's prove it, bro. And so um, they give, in a couple of these trials, they give um, the psychic dream team coordinates uh, to anywhere in the globe, right? So similar to Project Scanate, running the experiments the same way. And the one that convinced them was when they gave uh, the SRI coordinates to a, an, S an NSA cryptographic site in Virginia. It was top secret thing, right? And <clears throat> Based on those coordinates alone, Ingo Swan was able to draw um, an illustration of the facility uh, that was pretty bang on, and Pat Price was actually able to read code words on national security files. And this is unheard of. Remote viewing already sounds um, like preposterous to most people, right? It's already one of those things where it's like, how can that even be real? Uh, but within remote viewing communities, being able to read when remote viewing is also unheard of. So this is like this is like someone who is like a, a Merlin class magician is the best way that I can describe it. But like no one can read when they're remote viewing. So the fact that he was actually able to identify code words on those files and those words were later confirmed by both the NSA and the um, the CIA really went to show that Pat Price was in a, he was in a league of his own. Another one of Pat's most incredible hits was on a Siberian, a Soviet Siberian weapons facility. And so a CIA contact gave them the coordinates for this area. And at the time, even the CIA uh, dude had no idea what was going on there. And so Russell and uh, Pat do their, do their thing, right? They uh, put themselves in an electrically shielded Faraday cage and um, go to work. Pat leaned in his old oak desk chair, polished his gold-rimmed glasses, and closed his eyes. After a few moments, he began to describe his mental images. He said, I am in the sunshine, lying on top of a three-story building in some kind of R&D complex research and development. The sun feels good. As he was psychically lying there, he said, some kind of giant gantry crane just rolled over my body. It's going back and forth. It's the biggest damn crane I've ever seen. It runs on a track and it has wheels on both sides of the building. It has four wheels on each side of the building. I have to draw this. And so he does draw this. And uh, this, is, this is what he draws. This is uh, the actual facility. That's his drawing. But what's interesting is um, shortly after that, they were given a satellite image of the base and it looked as though Pat's drawing had some things that were accurate and other things that were not. And uh, Pat was like, no, you're, you're wrong. And it turned out, it turned out he was so certain, it turned out that that satellite image was about two months old. And since then there had been significant upgrades to the, um, the weapons factory. Pretty wild. There are a lot of stories uh, about Pat Price and, and his incredible psychic remote viewing hits. And I, what I find most interesting about them is that in several of them, he describes things that aren't present at a site at the time, at the time that he's describing it. But Targ, um, years, Pat died in 1975, so he'd only been working with them for a couple of years. But like years later, oop, Targ would find out that uh, either 
something that Pat had drawn had existed years ago on a site, or um, it was built years after. And this goes back to the idea that um, psi abilities transcend our conventional notions of time and space. So not only are people um, hypothetically projecting their consciousness out into the world um, at, through space, right, but also time, uh, because he was perceiving things that had happened long ago or would happen in the future. What? But it actually starts to make a lot of sense when we consider that all of Psy hinges on the idea that um, consciousness is fundamental and non-local. In other words, consciousness isn't actually centered in the human brain. Uh, Psy starts to make a lot more sense when we consider the possibility that time and space, time-space, it's not linear. And those are all concepts that we're going to dive into more deeply here on Idea Sex. So if that interests you, if you want to tumble down the rabbit hole a little further, do subscribe and join the guild. And in any case, thank you so much for having Idea Sex with me. And until next time. Thank <laughs> you.